Do you know anyone that suffered a disc herniation in their lower back? I'm about to share some information in this video that may prove to be helpful. Dr. Betsy Grunch has this amazing video about, and I'll have her tag it in this video, about a device called the Barricade. That's my girl Olivia, aka The O Crew, and she and I have become friends over social media and through this process of her suffering a disc herniation. How many of you guys have suffered a disc herniation? Because I know I have in both my neck and my lower back. The good news is a large majority of disc herniations can be managed conservatively, meaning without surgery. Up to 80% of disc herniations will heal on their own. That's what I'm trying to do for my girl. But there are some of those that go on to need surgery. So what's the concern with surgery? Well, for the large majority of patients that undergo a microdiscectomy, it's great and they do great. However, up to 25% of patients that have a microdiscectomy can have a re-herniation of that disc. So what does that mean? First talk about what a disc is. It's actually a cushion or cartilage that sits between the bones in our lower back. Think of it like the shock absorber of our spine. Well, here's the anatomical problem with our disc. It's kind of like a jelly donut. It's got a hard outer coating called the annulus and the inside is squishy. If you do something to tear that outer coating of the disc, the inside or the jelly can leak out and that's a lumbar disc herniation. If the patient needs surgery, we can go in there and scoop this little thing out and everything should be okay, right? 75% of the time, it works great, but in the 25% of the time, there's a problem. When we go in there surgically, there will be a hole in the disc in which we go in there and remove pieces of that disc. And some holes are small and some holes are big. Those patients that have big tears can have big problems. As a surgeon, I know when I see a patient with a big tear, it's kind of terrifying, honestly, because I know that they're going to be at high risk of re-herniation. So the temptation is there from a surgeon's standpoint to aggressively remove a lot of the disc to minimize that risk. However, by aggressively removing their disc, I am subjecting them to a risk of increased progressive degenerative disc disease as they get older. And the reality is a lot of patients that suffer disc herniations are young people. So how can I preserve their disc material, but also minimize their risk of disc reherniation? The reason why reherniations are a problem is because most of the time those patients need spinal fusion. And if you're young and you have a spinal fusion, I'm going to be honest with you, you're subjective to progressive degenerative disc disease and other levels in your back as you get older. So that index injury could potentially subject you to years and years of continuous back problems. Enter the barricade. It's a bone anchored annular closure device. A what? Okay, essentially it just plugs that big hole. And by plugging the hole in the disc, the patients have a significantly lower risk of disc reherniation. Show me some data, doctor. Here are eight different studies that were done in over 800 patients. The weighted average across all these studies is that the barricade reduced reherniation by up to 81%. And if you want to know where this data is from, it's from the International Journal of Spinal Surgery. It was just published. And if you look at the third author, it is none other than myself. I am a passionate believer of spinal innovation, and I believe that this product will be a game changer for the future of spine surgery. If we can reduce the risk of reoperation in young patients, we can change their lives forever. I want nothing but the best outcomes in my patients and whatever I can do in my power to minimize their risk of having progressive spine problems in the future is something that I wanna be able to give to them. So I hope Olivia never has to have surgery, but as a young mom, she has a subjective higher risk of reherniation because all the responsibilities that we do as moms. So I want to do whatever in my power we can do to get her better. And if she does need surgery, to do whatever I can in my power to prevent her risk of future problems with her back. And that's what I want for all my patients.